Hello beautiful people, this is Danix and this is State of the Kingdom. This week we have GM also. Hello, hello. Also, <laughs> Ruichi. Hey. Saito. Hey. And Jonathan. Hello. So Jonathan, we kind of have like this routine now since you're new to the podcast. We like you to say the following, what server you play on, your main character's name and level, and when did you begin playing our kingdom? Sure thing. Well, mm, as you hear, my name is Jonathan, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N. I play in the server Hydra. My main character has the same name as I do, Jonathan. My level is 63, and I start playing when the closer beta goes on. Starting. It's nice having you on. My pleasure. Welcome. So, Jim, also... How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, actually. Um, I just had a delicious cup of coffee and settling it into my normal duties, checking through the RTs. And yeah, it's a wonderful day in Area's neighborhood. I I kind of had like this breakthrough. You know, I've, I've been kind of obsessed with the whole banana suit and wanting it really badly. I had a breakthrough. Oh, um, instead of a banana suit, how about we have a banana idol on? I, I think I'm at a loss for words right now. That's, wow, really? that's taking it to a whole nother level. <laughs> I was already suggested. <laughs> hey, that's copyrighted really? by me, Sanix. I already suggested really? that on the forums. Really? Yes, I already did. What would be its attack though? Like throwing banana peels? That's already copyrighted by Mario Kart. <laughs> I don't know if it's coming. This is true. This is true. I don't hey, know. Uh, Maybe like a banana Sunday blast. Well, no. see, there's one. There's that's what attack already. Kill him with sweetness. Well, it's Serena's turns you into a bunny. Why not a banana turn you into a banana? <laughs> <laughs> we can banana make it a man- yeah. ban- banana suit. It will I'm thinking kind of a mandatory GM costume, possibly. <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> I would That's love something that. that would be. I awesome. would love that. Any event you guys come in with a banana costume. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody will know where the GMs are. Yes, oh, this gosh. is the face of the GMs. <laughs> Can you imagine Leo doing his Twitch TV, and immediately the first thing you see is the banana costume? <laughs> well, actually, he he wears one on a daily basis, IRL, and it's oh kind of creepy. We tried to make him stop, but uh. I mean, if he if that's his thing, I mean, that's it's okay. <laughs> I need to dress up as an apple and hang out with him. And an apple. Okay, oh, what about potato? Okay, let, let, I think we. <laughs> We're totally <laughs> off tangent. I think we killed the joke, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <Okay>. wow. <laughs> <laughs> So Saito, would you like to open us up with our first topic? Uh, sure. Um, the tiered spender controversial. Tiered, yeah. A tiered spender. Yeah, the tier the tier spender pack. Uh, how silly or serious is it that people are complaining about a bonus to having already spent money on the game? What other game publisher holds a monthly event that rewards you bonus items on top of the item that you already bought that month? I'd actually like to address both perspectives for that. Um, from from one side of it, it, it players often see this kind of the wrong way, um, and they they think that this is this item costs this much, which is not really the point of a tiered spender. It's more along the lines of spend this much and we throw in an additional item. So. I can offer an analogy. It's kind of along, along the lines of if you buy a house for like 400k, they'll throw in this car as well. That doesn't mean the car costs 400k. That means you're just getting a bonus item for purchasing the house itself. And also, I do want to point out that that last month we didn't actually even have a tiered spender. So basically, this month people are getting more items for the same thing, which it is kind of interesting that people are complaining about the fact that they're getting more items. Um, However, 
on the other on the other side of the equation, we do understand that people want to feel incentivized to spend. So uh, we we understand where some of them are coming from because they want to feel that you know they're getting well rewarded for for spending on items. So we definitely appreciate all feedback, um, whether it's positive or negative. Um, and we do try to both grow and adapt our promotions uh, based upon both current needs and feedback of the player base. So definitely any constructive feedback is essential to this process. Um, but one other thing that, that I can let you guys know that I'm not sure if we've uh, announced yet is that um, all of the items that we release in our item mall, our goal is for them to all eventually be available in the loyalty shop as well. I have something to add. Um, the problem isn't the tiered spending. It's good. I think it's a great idea. The problem is you have to balance with the free-to-play players. They feel like they are getting nothing, while the people who spend is getting everything. That's that's definitely an understandable viewpoint. Um, See, that's something that it, it is hard to balance, though, because we have to straddle the line between keeping a game profitable and also keeping it fair for, for everyone. Because, yeah, we, we do see that, you know, regardless of whether or not someone actually spends on the game, every player is valuable to it. If, if we only had people who spent, then we would not have a game. Um, so that is one thing that, that we do work on, and, and that's one thing that I, I did just touch upon, is that all items in the item mall will eventually be available in the loyalty shop as well. So that's one of the steps we're working on. Um, but we definitely see the viewpoint on that, but part of why I was raising what I did was that we did see a lot of people under the, uh, uh, under the assumption that, that a tiered spender meant they had to buy this item for this much, which is not how it works at all. It's a bonus item thrown in for spending on other items already. Yeah, I, I will suggest that do some more events for the free-to-play players, well, to every player, to get those items too. Not only the only way to have them is spending or waiting to have them in the loyalty shop, it's... Mm, so it's better to do more events for the people who can afford to pay. Well, I feel like the game already, like especially in the loyalty shop, even what's available already, it's already a good wealth. And I, I, I like um, t I like tier two standard uh, events because they've always managed to suck some extra money out of my pockets every month. Um, in regards to <laughs> <laughs> in regards to our kingdom, I have two perspectives on this. At first, um, when I first saw it, I was like, awesome, tier spender event. But then at the same time, I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. Even for the $300 tier, there's not a full key. I didn't think that was going to blow up to be such a big deal. I was very surprised that it wasn't the full key at the $300 range. But at the same time, I understand how tier spender works because I've been around area games for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I saw the controversy, I kind of felt like people were forgetting. This is a bonus. Like, first off, you don't have to get anything extra. Like, this is something that area is doing to incentivize you for spending, which is a good thing, you know? <clears throat> but at the same time, you're basically complaining about the bonus that you're getting, where I can't think of any other publisher that on a consistent basis offers this sort of event where you always are going to get bonus items with X amount of money that you spend this month. Well, I mean, every every publisher does things their own way, and there are companies that have promotions that work great for them that might not work great for us, mm -hmm. and kind of vice versa. You know, some of the things we do might not work so well for other uh, publishers. A lot of it depends on the game, the community, all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah. Um, however, it, it, it is, uh, again, we do understand that people want to feel incentivized to spend. People want to feel rewarded for what they're doing. Um, so that's one thing that really we have to take uh, the feedback they give us on that and balance it in the equation of needing to make sure that the game actually is profitable enough to survive. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a, a mixed bag there where you have to, uh, just balance the equation on that. I think people were just worried that with the 
um, tier events and things like that, the game might be going in a direction that was more pay to play. And there was a lot of people that was um, playing the game for free that didn't want to really spend all that much money that was just worried about that. But it's good to know that um, eventually all of those items are going to be on the loyalty shop so that they don't feel as if they're forced to have to buy these items from these AP buyers. If they wanted to, they right. can play the game out, gather loyalty points, and eventually buy the item themselves. I mean, it does mean you have to play the game, of course, but yeah. you know that's not necessarily a bad thing. We, we want to have people in there playing the game, um, and that's one of the, the nice perks of something like the loyalty shop is it will reward you for playing. Exactly, and I'll... I like. I never knew that your guys' intention with these uh, tier splendor rewards is to eventually have them in the loyalty shop because that I see that as a very good thing. I I really love that because that to me says, okay, there's going to come a day where this item is going to be worth less than ten thousand loyalty points, which is the max loyalty points you can. Well, nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, <clears throat> which is the max. And if you think about it, with all the new methods of loyalty points, um of you being able to gather them that are coming in the next few months on top of the loyalty points mm -hmm. that you can get in some of these tiered spender tiers um it's a very good thing um i like to put in the the input that i play a vast amount of games from uh europe asia japan korea and i played m many of them had different systems i um and to be bluntly honest Anyone who thinks that Aria Games is pay to win, that's not understand what pay to win means. Because uh, pay to win is when you can't get the item unless you um, pay the money for it. But even then, smart players, what they do is they'll buy the item off the the AP people because they want to when they when they buy AP, they either have two goals: they're going to buy something for themselves, or they're going to try to make money off of it. And so it's very, fairly easy to get someone to say, hey, I'll buy your AP off you and whatnot, and it'll work, and it'll work out. As for the tier spender thing, it's not, I, I don't think it's more of pay to, um, that they feel, oh, uh, you know, this is getting paid to win, it's going bad direction, this fortune pack, everything here, it's going downhill. It's more that, oh, look at this key, they, they, they got two boss key, <laughs> I mean, Tusk. Uh, Tosco, yeah, I forgot her name. The the cat lady, uh, ninja yeah. cat lady, and um, she and they're like, lady, we only yeah, get no, three keys. What the heck, three keys? I oh, want yeah, the freaking true. full keys. It's like, like it was three hundred dollars or something. Yeah, and and they're like, I want the full keys. I don't want three keys. You know, if I buy every uh, like get everything, and that and it's more like they want it, and you can't give it to them, but you are giving them a little bit that you know, the kind of thing, and it's um. It's mo mostly that, that. That's how I feel because I'm mm -hmm. I'm a gamer myself, and I, I I the only time I felt robbed was when I played a game where they had fortune packs. I bought a hundred dollars worth of the fortune pack, got nothing out of it, but like but crap like scrap. But and with this, if you buy fortune packs and you spend a lot of money on it, you will get rewards based on how much you spend. And I think it's a win-win uh, system they created. You know, um, as as well as um, it's interesting that you actually bring up the fortune packs as well, since I know that's a point of contention for some players, um, and that's actually something that we're looking at doing as well um, is improving something like that. A recent example would be the uh, Serena Essence packs that we released. We actually put in a brand new system for that. Um, where if you open a certain amount of them and don't receive either a key fragment or the key itself, you will eventually receive a guaranteed key fragment. Um, because despite what some people think, it is not actually our intention to make it so no one gets anything. We, we do want players to actually be able to win items, but we know that sometimes RNG just Sucks. is not... <laughs> yeah, it's it's not in your favor, yeah. and that's that's the thing about RNG uh, um, is, you know, sometimes you open something and get get something right away, and sometimes mm. you'll just be stuck opening over and over and over again, which we actually don't like to see that. And so that's one thing that we're working to see if we can improve in the future. Ruby here is like a lucky charm herself. 
She got like two keys <laughs> in a day. And... I did. I was so happy. Um, no, I I actually got the Kotonoha 4K one day, and then uh, two or three days later, I ended up getting. Um, let's see, I got Uzurio and Vayu, both of them four keys on the same day. I was so happy. But then afterwards, all my luck ran out. I, I used so much of just... my luck. I used so much of it for those three days. <laughs> I bet a GM just like increased drop loot for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to confirm or deny that. <laughs> oh. let's, let's give her a present. Yes, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I, a lot of the stuff that, that we work on, um, it just really it depends on so much on on the feedback of the player base, um, on the current economy. Um, so it really, we make a lot of adjustments um, to to item all and various promotions we run based upon both current feedback and what state the game is in at the moment. So uh, on that, actually, um, we did want to touch upon like what the current economy is, um, how we think various things have been doing to it. So one of the topics we want to discuss is both current state of, of the uh, game economy, effect that animals had on it, um, and a few, few sub-questions, um, such as, I mean, do we think that the Founders Packs have been a good or bad influence? That's something that, that we've actually been reviewing a lot. So since I know a lot of people were wondering about that, the Founders Packs, as far as we saw them, they achieved their intended goal. Um, and that goal was to first help make up for the fairly expensive cost of launching a game, which is a very, very pricey thing to do. Um, so that kind of helps make sure that we can actually uh, be able to uh, launch a new game. But it also kind of gave some nice goodies to players that wanted to support AK from the beginning. So as far as what we intended the Founders Packs to do, they worked just as we wanted them to. Um, however, we don't feel that those have a huge impact on the economy themselves um, due to a few things. First off, many of the items in them were non-tradable or a lot of the items also didn't really have a huge impact on the economy in the first place. You know, titles, mounts, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think about the current economy then? Like, is it going well? Is it going down the gutter? Like, mm, you really want me to comment on that? Yeah. <laughs> I get nasty on that. This is the okay. state of the kingdom. Okay. Um, I feel it's kind of go down. It's going downhill on Hydra mostly because of the there's a lot of gold bots and they'll. Uh, I don't. I haven't checked the price lately, but because I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't. Apparently, because, I, I don't. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I I don't know about it personally, but apparently they went up because uh, you can see the effect that it has on the general economy in the marketplace. It yeah. just raised up all of the prices. And there's a, I mean, for example, like the costume dyes, they used to be, what, 15 gold or something? Now 20, people are 30, trying to, yeah, yeah, okay, well, 15 to 30 gold, and people mm -hmm. are trying to sell it for like 90 gold now. It's ridiculous. 150 gold, why not? But it's, it's <laughs> mostly because I'm too... A lot of the player minds, like, um, why spend $20 of AP, I mean, and trying to get some item and then trying to sell it when I can buy $20 worth of gold and get uh, 2K, whatever price it's going at. And they, but they don't see that that's, you're not supporting the game when you do that. You're supporting wh whoever is botting and, um, and getting the gold. So, but... Mm -hmm. But they're winning. Like if if they if they don't get caught, you know, buying a code, they're winning. So um, like they they have more advantage than well. You know, trying one to one thing they'll people. say is that you're eventually going to get caught. Yeah. Um, we are constantly checking for that kind of thing, and we have already addressed a large number of players that did that, and you will not enjoy it if you do get caught. So. <laughs> Basically, so, that that's something that that we've we've talked about before, and it's it's something that we feel very strongly about. Um, but purchasing gold can really really damage a game, yes, in so many ways. Um, and while we do agree that it can really lead to inflation, um, 
as far as how the economy is doing itself, um, so far, it's actually following fairly predictable patterns for a new game that's undergoing its growth phase, um, which we've actually been, been monitoring this. And a lot of players equate prices going up with a bad economy. But that's actually something that should be expected in, in any new game, um, mainly because as people gain higher levels, they have more time to, to make money, you're going to see prices raise a lot. Um, and this is just because of the fact that they actually didn't have the money before. Um, however, we, we do actually keep a very close eye on economy metrics. Um, we try to keep up-to-date info on like the quantity of items, average price of items, all that kind of stuff. And we have taken steps to address that before on, on previous games. I, I have to add that, well, the problem, I think, is those items that you can only get with AP, like the 10 slot bag. Everyone needs them. It's a very important item, item that you need. And only you can get it from AP or buying from other players. It started to cost 50 gold, now it cost 100 gold. I actually saw it for 150, 145 today. Yeah, 150 now, actually. But, uh, well, I think one other reason why the prices are a lot higher is that people who are playing the game right now and got to those high levels, I honestly feel like they ran out of things to do. And if that's the case, they're just running the dungeons, they're doing the dailies, and I mean, they're just gathering gold. Yes, that's yeah, true. I have, I mean, I have um, guildies that just have tons and tons of gold because they've just gathered mm -hmm. it for the new content, yes. and they're just kind of sitting on their character going, well, I'm waiting, I'm oh, waiting, yeah. I have all the money that I need <laughs> that I could have spent on my Honestly, though, that's, <laughs> that's pretty normal throughout a, throughout a game, um, and I say this both as being someone who actually sees the metrics and as someone who's actually played quite a few games myself. Um, is you tend to see a certain rise and fall in the average price of items throughout the history of the game. A lot of it does depend on, as you said, content. That's definitely a very, very uh, noticeable thing that that will affect the economy of the game itself. Um, however, we do actually have a lot more content coming very soon. Um, but yeah, we're we're definitely keeping an eye on that. And while it definitely has been. Um, uh, prices have been rising, it's still within reasonable patterns to expect for a game at this level of, of its growth pattern. I knew it was going to rise when um, people were higher level because they'll be able to farm dungeons faster and do everything faster, but I just didn't expect it to uh, get so high because an average person playing for maybe only able to get in two or three full runs after um, a reset a day, like, you know, how you have to go to work in the morning and then come back at, after that. Uh, you maybe get in one or two runs uh, of a full, like, um, reset, and you would, you would probably only make about 40 to 50 gold. So, and on, on, that, on that money, you would have to um, farm a lot just to buy a lot of things that you need, um, but I mean that's that's for extra things really. So yeah, I, I can see that. What do you think about the monthly cost of memberships and their effect on the economy? I think if, I think uh, the founder uh, are enjoying that. Uh, you you mean the founder ones where they get for yeah. free, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the founders people are really enjoying that because if they don't want it, they'll either trade it for something really good. Or or sell it for a really high price. I seen it going for five and gold, six hundred gold, and which which is awesome for them because they supported the game. They should at least allow to have some privileges, even though they still complaining about not not getting more things. But <laughs> either way, um, yeah. People will always complain. I just feel like it's inevitable nowadays. Well, I mean, we we, we expect it, but you know, it doesn't mean that all complaints are invalid. Yeah, that, yeah. that is it, true. That is true. Yeah, it just. Basically, as far as those go um, themselves, the monthly cost of membership, one thing to bear in mind is that pretty much any item being released will impact the economy in some way. 
Um, whether or not it's it's a huge deal, that I mean, that can depend on the item. Um, we don't feel that that releasing the three costumes over three month period has had a huge effect on the economy. I mean, sure, you're going to see people buying it and and trading it and all that, but that's not really having a huge effect on the economy itself. What it has more of an effect on is people wanting to have the orange costumes, um, which since the game is new, there's a lot of players and not all have had access to the orange costumes that they want. So that's, that's more of the thing it has an effect on. Um, however, this is something that there's more added as time goes by. We will be releasing more um, costumes of that level over time. And one thing that we, we do want to make sure players understand is that orange costumes are meant to be rare. Um, they, they drop in game, but they're very, very difficult to get. Um, and we feel they should be special. I actually think that's a very good idea, the monthly costume membership. I don't think the, it affects the economy since they are items that you can get on the game, like the costume custom. Everyone can get them from the dungeon. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they get in some fashion. Uh, they eat one effect. Only the people who wants to look beautiful. Yeah, the cosmetic uh, people. <laughs> yeah, while they do have a, a boost to your stats, of course, it's it's hardly a, a game breaking one. Yeah. Um, so it, yeah, I mean. Uh, we do understand that you know a lot of people want to have access to that, and there are going to be some people that are willing to pay a lot for having one of them. Which, sure, it'll affect the economy, but just because something affects the economy doesn't mean that's a, that's a negative thing. In fact, we like to see people um, actually participate in in the economy of a game that makes for a healthy game. Yeah. Um, speaking of the the economy and everything. Um, what I'm looking forward to the most is the upcoming content. And we actually got to see a second part of what's coming up for our kingdom. So what do you guys think about um, the last um, live stream, which took place last Saturday? Mm. Last Saturday. The thing that I most enjoy out of that um, stream was that there was a female who was speaking. Even though I love, I love <laughs> GM Leo, hearing another voice is beautiful so now is probably not a good time to tell you that was me with a voice changer are you serious <laughs> hey that's oh, uh no i'm all way. for it you need, you need to you get that okay, change that, out that, that may not have been entirely true uh, i, sure I, I may have been facetious on you right now jam off so I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> don't judge me <laughs> 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 well, I mean, personally, as far as what your favorite part was, I mean, that depends on who you ask. Um, I know a lot of people in the office here are pretty excited about the new zone. Um, and I know a lot of peop people are looking forward to the rankings. Um, if you want my my personal take, um, and this is kind of kind of silly, but um, the thing that I liked the most was actually Serena, uh, the Eidolon, even though she's actually already been released. I mean, personally, she's one of my favorite Eidolons. I mean, she she's has... so cute! That, and she has really cool combo, um, and also her personality actually reminds me of a friend of mine. So, yeah, she's one of my personal favorites, but it it depends on who you ask. But Endora got that scythe, though. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Endora in there. I was really surprised you guys showed off uh, Endora. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. It's adorable I forgot it. though. It looks kind of awkward <laughs> seeing the moon kind of, yeah. you know, floating, walking. It, it's the moon is kind of, I don't know. But when she's <laughs> sitting, on, don't she sitting on the moon and she's just kind of like doing her thing? It was so cute. My she guilty was... went crazy buying the boxes just so he could buy the Serena. I mean, have Serena. He showed it off to us the moment he got it. I was so jealous. I'm, I'm trying to get her on my uh, on my actual uh, account, my non GM account. I'm I'm working on that. Have to wait for the next crescent moon though. Yeah. Oh yeah, it ends today, I think, right? Very very soon. Yeah. Very, yeah, very soon. Oh wow. If so, anyone 
who has her and haven't seen her dance that she does when you uh, connect with she her. Um, yeah. Yes. No way. Yeah, yeah, so invites you to dance with her as well. Oh, oh my so goodness. Oh, yes. Awesome. Can this be on stream or something? I want to see this dance. <laughs> I'm sure uh, I'll give Xanic a link to it. But yeah, it's so cute. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of cool stuff that that we have coming up, and there's going to be more in in future streams as well. And so, uh, yeah, we're definitely planning on having this be a good recurring thing for people to get sneak peeks on. What do you guys think about the current player base and the community landscape of the game? I can touch upon like how we feel they're they're doing as a community, um, as well as like how many players we're actually seeing. I mean. So first off, as how we're actually seeing them doing, they've been fairly positive on the whole. I mean, based upon our interactions with them. I mean, there's always going to be someone unhappy about something, um, but we generally try to differentiate between the vocal minority um, and the community consensus as a whole. Um, however, we've seen an overwhelmingly positive uh, response from players, both from our perspective as GMs and from when we play the game ourselves. So, I mean, it, it often often depends on like who you know and who you talk to, and you guys may have had a different experience. But this is based on on us playing the game and as well as observing the players. Yeah. I, I think the game is doing fine on the player base. It's just um, the actually the problem I have is, and and also the ones that started uh, during the founder the um, beta uh, is is mostly we played the game so much we 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 got to the low forty content and actually I think we could got to low fifty then too, but um, when the game was released we already played that then we expected more content. So now we're kind of bored, and that's um, that's our problem. But actually, I talk to many new players, and they they say, "Well, this game is yeah. only in beta, just because I got to low 50. I I still think this game has a lot of potential and has a lot of uh, things that I can still do." And I to think them, that is part of it. Yeah. 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 To them, they feel like um, I need like the the content is fine enough because I know a new content is coming, and it's only an open beta. And but to the founders, they're like, "Oh, we already played all this stuff. <laughs> we need we need more." I, I so, think that's part of it, and could lead yeah. to players feeling that that you know they've already done everything there is to do because they did it twice, um, which is an understandable perspective. But I mean, that's often something you you encounter when you're first launching a game. Um, but we do have a lot of stuff coming up soon. Yeah. Um, now, I, I think one thing people, and I've seen people talking about this a lot, is about how many players we have logging in still. Um, and one common thing that I see is people will say, why don't all the channels stay crowded all the time now? Um, which is it's, it's kind of amusing to see because um, this is something that... that from our perspective, it's it's a normal thing. Um, games are not going to stay like jam packed all the time, like, nonstop. Um, yeah. However, we actually see the actual numbers of players logging in, um, and it's actually still remaining very very high. Which honestly, it's actually fairly unusual the yeah. the amount of players we're still having logging in. Because. Um, so I mean, it just it depends on what time of the day you're you're logging in, um, whether or not people are going to school, anything like that. Um, but we've actually been keeping an eye on that, and there's still definitely a good number of people logging in. Yeah, it depends on your server as well, because I don't know what um, they're uh, doing. Because uh, on Hydra, at, like late at night at two a.m., I'll go on because I'm just up at that hour, and I'll see crowded. And maybe one server, which is maybe, is in yellow. Everybody else is always red. But I mean, honestly, if you guys want to take a break and let us have a lag-free server, I mean, that's uh, <laughs> by all means. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of us. So, anyways, yeah. I guess it's just that uh, 
I don't know how many of those people running around are probably going to be alts, you know, people that uh, got to a pretty high level and made several alts. I know people that already has three characters each at level 50-something, all of them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're just all waiting, so if we can get more information on that later, if we get more uh, content soon, that'll be great. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we'll touch upon that a little bit later on, though, because there's a few things that I definitely want to go over for you guys. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, here's some questions that we've gathered from people who were just, you know, they had something to ask you also. Um, there's one from Sparkle with a four and a three, though. So he asked, I was wondering why the Eidolon Maya isn't available yet, and that we know that she's in game, but there's no way to get her. What do you think about her future? Also, when will permanent fairy wings finally be available? I like the last question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so does Leo. Um, okay, so uh, first off, I'm actually not aware of a Maya, so I'm going to assume they're talking about Maja. Yes. Um, which That's my guess for that one. Um, so as exciting as, as new content and islands are, um, for most, most of them, we actually do have a set release schedule already in place. So while you may see it as being in the game, and it may even be something that we've, we've shown off before, that actually doesn't mean it's ready. Um, like a, lot of, a lot of them, for their different spells or abilities, we still need to do a lot of testing. We need to make sure everything works as it should. Um, so... For that particular one, um, we don't actually have a, a, a set release date, but it is something that is being tested and will be released once it's ready. As for the permanent fairy wings, um, those actually uh, first came out today. Um, I know, I saw them. I was going to answer yeah. it if you didn't answer it. But I oh, people have it now, guys. The founders Yeah, that, that was packs. actually um, one of the costumes from the Founders Packs, and those yeah. went out today. Um, however, they're going to be more available in uh, in the future as well. That's good because so, I'm you know, through other promotions. ridiculously expensive right now, but I want one. I heard they're going for like 1.5k. Yeah, wait, really? Yeah, like 1500 gold. Got to oh. get them fairy wings. Got to catch them all. Anyways, um, I'm <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. The next question is from Co Copestic. Wait, Copestetic. Copacetic? Copacetic, yeah. <laughs> he asks, will we be able to further evolve our Eidolons in the next patch? Okay, that is not going to be in the next patch, unfortunately. Um, it will be coming in the future, but it's not something that we have planned for the upcoming patch. Um, however, as to what we do have coming, there is actually, um, we actually have a lot of sneak peeks coming up in the next few days, um, starting tomorrow. Um, and there's actually a forum post in, in our news and announcements forum right now of uh, patch previews. Um, but I'll actually read off uh, a few of the things that we're going to be showing off right now. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. Awesome. So on uh, tomorrow, the 5th, um, we're actually. One Today, when you guys yeah. actually listen to this, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to be showing off uh, Sky Tower. Um, on the no six way! Mm -hmm. On the 6th, we're going to be showing off um, the class formerly known as the Qatar, which will actually be named the Brawler, Brawler class. Brawler, yes. yes! Why? Uh, I like Qatar right better. No, Qatar <laughs> sounds cooler. I like, bar I like Brawler. No, why Brawler. 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 It sounds <laughs> mainly like yeah. Brawler. No, there Qatar you. sounds more In fact, uh, like uh, ninja -y, you know? pronounce it like that when you talk about it. That's, that's <laughs> important. Thing. Um, let's see. On the on the seventh, um, we're going to be showing off some new maps, uh, four new dungeons, um, and we have actually have a lot of other stuff that we're going to be showing off. Um, some of it four you may have already seen in this. Oh, I'm sorry. Four new dungeons. That's correct. Wow. Yeah. So uh, Ooh, yeah, a lot more stuff coming up soon. Um, and we're also going to be showing off some stuff that we've already kind of touched upon before, like ranking systems, fishing system, as well as um, new events, like a Valentine's event and stuff like that. So oh, yeah, yep, we, actually have, mm -hmm, we actually have a forum post on that. So this is all stuff that we're going to be showing off pretty soon. 
And yeah, the patch is coming uh, very, very soon. Well, Valentine's right around the corner. Like, yeah. do you have any um, idea about the marriage system? Um, not personally, uh, uh. unfortunately. Um, I, I know that the the couple system. Yeah. I, I know that it's it's coming. Um, unfortunately, it will not be part of this patch. Uh, I mean, you know, it would have been perfect if it wasn't time right? for Valentine's Day. I know, want, but it's probably it too good to patch, be true. We, we did talk about it. We wanted it for the patch, but unfortunately, it was not something that was ready in time for it. So, Aww. unfortunately, not this time. Yeah, it, it would have been. Future. Cool. Yeah, in it's the future, okay. though. It's so, okay. yeah, but th that's a lot of stuff that's going to be coming out very, very soon. Yeah, it's okay. We don't need that Valentine patch. I'm single, anyways. <laughs> you both put out a bitter and lonely patch, Jeff. Yes, bitter and lonely patch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me play the world's smallest violin. <laughs> oh, you can yeah. have somebody in game. No, nah. find the find the girl player that I don't know looks cute. I'll make an all. All of them look cute. And then marry <laughs> myself. <laughs> I will marry myself. That's what I'll Are you do. gonna marry yourself? Well, you can't oh, play yourself. That. You can't play no, yourself. No, no. I'll, I'll, I'll make an alt and marry myself. <laughs> wow. Unless you have to be online at the same time, then it wouldn't work. But. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. You probably have to. I mean, it's a marriage, you know. Okay, I, I have to ask this because it's gonna be debated. It's gonna be talked about. Um, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. They, it already said by, by someone that it will be be implanted like that, but I'm not sure. Um, will we have same sex marriage, as in any sex as well? Like, you know. Uh, um, y you know, I don't know personally. Um, I would hope so. Yes. Um, unfortunately, that's not something I've been able to test myself. Um, Mary Leo. So I don't, I don't personally know, but I would hope so. I yeah, so I hope so too. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would make Aura Kingdom a really, really uh, progressive game compared to so many others, if not all of them that I know of. I don't know any that's been as progressive as Aura Kingdom thus far, if that's the case. Yes. I mean, I've I seen a few that. with uh, married systems. Or seen yeah, there have been some like that. But, oh, um, really? Yeah, oh. But, um, I haven't ran into one of those. Yeah, but, I'm, but yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm it's something we'll, we'll know more about once we actually get to, to test that a bit more. Let's just be prepared for the Brawler class because it is going to annihilate. Everything. Why in the world did you and rename it to Brawler? Qatar was Because it's fine. awesome. What? Brawler. What the hell is right with Brawler? It's Brawler. No. Okay. <laughs> it, 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 it's, Qatar sounds so much cooler. Don't you think it sounds more ninja y? I don't know. Qatar, but it's not a ninja. Qatar, Qatar. It's not, I mean, it looks close enough. I mean, it functions close to a ninja, right? Something an assassin like? No, mm. it uses like lotus, lotus strikes and stuff. It's a brawler. Yeah, brawler. Oh. <laughs> I think you guys huh? just like saying brawler. Brawler. <laughs> no, it's. <laughs> No, it sounds like a Pokemon sound. No. <laughs> Why can't it Brawler. be Brawler? Brawler, Brawl. Doesn't Brawl. it sound like a Pokemon? I bet oh. you it's going to be in the next generation Pokemon. I swear. Oh. Oh, Brawlor. Oh. You can say the Brawlor. same thing about Guitar. See, Guitar sounds like some busty ninja lady, Guitar. like a new Elalon. Yeah, what? So. Guitar. Guitar, so, guitar, guitar, guitar. So, but Brawler <laughs> kind of going to be a, a point of hot contention among our. Yeah, our, yeah it's going to be a hot topic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> you guys make it sound like I'm ridiculous or crazy, but seriously, no, no. you guys sound like Pokemon. I no. bet you. No, no, no. Somebody from the Pokemon management development team is going to record your voice, Saito, and use it as the voice of the next Pokemon Brawler oh, for the next generation. I would enjoy oh that. Gosh. I would. You know enjoy what that. they would? They. I think what they need to do is make a banana Pokemon. Okay. I would have <laughs> to the banana. Okay. No, actually, no. That would be bad. You can't eat Pokemon. I, that is I no thought thing. we were going to be able to get through this with only one banana reference. <laughs> <laughs> I thought wrong. <laughs> I was so foolish. 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 Foolish GMs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cannot gosh. escape from the banana. No, now, no, ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm dead. <laughs> so, wait, do we have any more questions here? Uh, no, that's, that's it. Oh, that's it? Okay. 
Oh gosh, it's it's so good yeah, having you guys. <laughs> I have an important announcement for you guys. Starting next week, you should see a huge spike in the audio quality for the podcast because we'll be moving from Skype to a really awesome recording program. It's really low key, but its quality is really um, high def, and I really really like it. Um, the past couple of weeks, there's been some growing pains, some technical difficulties, I have to admit, but your guys' criticism, your guys' comments have been greatly appreciated because they've made us even better, even stronger, and I want to make State of the Kingdom even more popular. Um, the first episode already has over 2,000 views. The second episode is just reaching 1,000 views, and I just thank you guys for your, all your support. Um, just, you guys have just been so awesome. Thank you for all the panelists that have been on. Thank you also Saito, Jonathan, and Ruru for being on this week. You guys have been very, very hilarious. <laughs> My pleasure. I forgot well. our most important <laughs> host here, Mr. GM. Where's exactly, his thanks? Exactly, Mr. GM. You, you deserve a ton of thanks for even being able to make the time for us. And yeah, you've just been very awesome. Well, I just appreciate being able to be here. Yeah, so um, definitely some big improvements in the future starting next week. Uh, we will see a couple of new panelists, maybe one or two. Um, we're really, I'm really trying to get these gear, gears moving. This is a suggestion from you guys. So we want to have like new panelists on and new insight from different parts of the community. Um, I know Jonathan is um, actually a part of Armada on the Hydra server. And his guild kind of like keeps to themselves, but I really wanted to let everyone know, like you, just because you are a Latino guild or a German guild or whatever, our kingdom is for is open to the entire world, is open to the globe. So if you'd like to be on State of the Kingdom, please say your interest in the um, Area Games forum post. It is now stickied, so it's hard to miss. It's mm -hmm. going to be stickied in the general discussion. Please submit your questions. That you have every week um every i believe on saturdays there's a live stream and you guys flood the live stream with a lot of these questions that they cannot answer at the time because they're already so busy displaying the content and teasing with the content whereas on state of the kingdom you can submit as many questions as you want to and gm also will gather them and go back to the team and they'll discuss um, which questions to be answered and just released a ton of information for you guys. So if you have a question that has not been asked on a live stream, I mean, ha that has not been answered from the live stream, please ask them in the State of the Kingdom forum post. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's been, again, it's been great having you guys on. Yeah, Thank you, as always. All right, you guys have a wonderful day and stay beautiful. Please check out the featured artists for this series.